Christopher Decker, the host of the Eureka Moments Only podcast, where we talk about the trials, the tribulations, those Eureka aha moments that shape and make business and 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 change the world. Today, we're sitting down with Christopher Gavigan, um, founder, co-founder of the Honest Company, and now here at Prima. Christopher, it's really nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Um, gosh, where do you start when someone asks you that question? I think it's a good place to start on what motivates you and what gets you excited and why you're doing what you're doing. If people flippantly say the word purpose, I, I like to collide that with the word passion and your mission orientation or your mission work. Um, and what, what charges you up? I think if you take care of and or ignite and find out why you do what you do or what specific point of view you have in the world that no one else has, mm. that unique um, watershed moment or lynch, that linchpin of you, uh, what are you most equipped to do that no one else in the world can do? Then I mm. think you are able to identify your why and then your what will soon follow. So my why is really how do you collide science, nature and health in a very specific way? Mm -hmm. And how does that determine both positive and negative outcomes of health? A, I'm an environmental scientist by training. I am uniquely curious on how people understand messages and content and communication and words. Mm -hmm. and also all things emotion and how that can transform and ignite new changes of behavior and lifestyle. So the, the content piece and the communication piece and emotion piece. And then, um, so if you, if you take the science, nature and health, and then how do we take information in and the who's delivering the information, I get really, really charged up. So I've spent my entire career across that spectrum of, of, um, of work, I've worked in the nonprofit world for close to um, a decade as mm -hmm. a, a CEO and executive director of gathering the data out of medicine and academia specific to um, positive, uh, in this case, negative outcomes. So what are the toxicants and chemicals and those things in our world are, that are causing the epidemics of health that we're concerned about? Asthma, allergies, autism, learning disorders, behavioral cancer, childhood cancers, um, hormone disruption. And then how do we understand what those key things are and how do we avoid and take precautionary action um, against those? And then uh, in the world of that, that um, nonprofit messaging and alerting and alarming and exciting an audience base specific to moms and new babies and new families. Um, this nonprofit was called Healthy Child, Healthy World. I wrote a book by that same name ultimately your consumer base or your audience base wants to know a few things, but the number one thing they want to know is what to buy. So if you've alerted me and you've alarmed me and excited me, now what do I buy? How do I avoid and how do I choose better for you brands? And in a world where we know that the regulatory environment exists in this, um, in this country, if not this world, that doesn't really take um, action against certain things um, in the marketplace. It's up to the brands and the brands really need to be driving the self-imposed restriction, restrictions and constrictions and, and deciding factors and how they make product. So what's sitting on store shelves is not always safe. Mm. And so the brand leaders um, need to take um, make those decisions. And so I took all that information and decided to start a brand with a few co-founders called The Honest Company. And The Honest Company was a brand that was a Yes, it was a brand disruptor for a marketplace, but it was also a peace of mind brand mm -hmm. and um, delivering messages of safety and purity and consciousness and sustainability was uh, always top of mind. And we created a large portfolio and continuing today have a, a suite of products that really stand for best in class. Um, but it was you know, it was, wasn't until I really sat on the boards of these medical institutions and one in particular Mount Sinai that I heard about this one class of ingredients um, that wasn't causing harm, but it was causing a renewed excitement around balance and homeostasis and well-being. And that was the world of cannabinoid research or cannabinoids science, particularly into the world of a 
a few plants, but the world of functional botanicals and cannabis and how that collides and how we discover and know about and teach about this newly on uh, newly discovered body system called the endocannabinoid system. And again, science, nature, and health, who's talking about it, how are you teaching about it? And that emerging market piece and that emerging um, future leaning science piece was extremely exciting for me. So I've been doing a lot of work in this area um, as a brand developer and, and creator of, of brand architecture for a long, long time and um, specifically with Honest and then parlayed that into a new brand called Prima. Um, we just recently launched. We're sitting in our offices today in, here in Santa Monica. Um, but that new brand is here to ignite a, a, a movement around an understanding as well as best in class products and industry defining standards that um, that this industry so needs because these molecules are so, so important for humanity, um, for all of us. And I can get further and deeper into the science, but these, these molecules really can ignite a better state of balance and really help us manage the modern day epidemics, which are stress and exhaustion and fatigue and, um, and really trying to get up, uh, our bodies into, um, and unlock and unlift us into a better place. Into a better place. Yeah. I mean, and, and that better place for a lot of us is, is surprisingly, we all, all mammals have, excuse me, all mammals have this body system, this endocannabinoid system that 95% of all doctors don't even know about. And when we, did you first really? It was in 2009, this? in 2009. And so, um, the discovery of this this system, this receptor network, um, this largest cellular receptor network inside of our entire body that is really the central processing system that connects glands, organs, central nervous tissue, brain tissue. It is uh, skin and in our dermis. It is a, a fascinatingly... Um, it's a bleeding edge type of discovery. And if we're talking about eureka moments, oh my God, here's one. Here's this new body system. No one understands. What's the science saying? What's the way um, that we're um, unpacking it? What are molecules that can ignite and unlock the system? And what are what are ways that uh, of discoveries? And so we're the science is in CPG and pharmaceuticals in medicine. I mean, millions and millions and millions of dollars across the globe are going into cannabinoid research because you manage pain in two two ways: cannabinoids and opioids. And we know with the opioid epidemic, it's happening there, right? A lot of addiction and a, and a lot of death, um, sadly, because of that. But not a single human has ever died from too much cannabinoids in their bodies, right? So the body knows how to natively process and manage these molecules. We actually make them in our own bodies, these, mm -hmm. um, these cannabinoids. And so if mom is passing them on to her babies through breast milk because she's making them, they must serve a very, very critical function and primary function in the body. And, um, and to feel it, to know that you can extract them and here's the really the interesting charge about the entire category is that it's uniquely connected to the cannabis plant, cannabis being the larger um, plant phenome. But then you have two branches of that. You have the cannabis plant or the marijuana plant, and then you have the hemp plant. Hemp is the sober botanical cousin, has no THC. THC is the one active molecule that gets you high or it's psychoactive um, but or intoxicating, but you have 120 other cannabinoids that actually are linked to certain um, certain physiological mechanisms inside the body, and so discovering those, unlocking those, and 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 really delivering those in a, in the best molecular fashion is really what Prima is all about. Prima is there to, again, to teach, to demystify, to contextualize. Mm -hmm. Again, the content and awareness and communications. Um, place so we have over 80, 80 pieces of originally created content but then it's how do you deliver these molecules in accessible normal formats that the body can actually receive so mm. right now you're seeing again it's an early days marketplace that's getting rather frothy around cbd but i'm here to and this this team is here to really bring it into institutional sophistication 
and um, and pedigree and know-how around purity, around potency, around testing, around val validation and verification of the molecules. And again, around this sense of science driving, how do they get inside? What's the bioavailability format? Mm -hmm. um, so what we're drinking today, you're drinking a, a, a Prima um, go-to CBD elixir. I'm drinking one called Brain Fuel, which has our CBD powder as well as um, other adaptogenic herbs and botanicals and nootropics. Um, it's how do you use functional botanicals to create a therapeutic experience to really solve for a condition or um, consumer benefit. And so this mm -hmm. brain, bring brain cognition and energy and focus and vitality. Mm -hmm. um, this is around calming and, and more a grounded centered um, experience. And so it's, it's going to be, it has been, it's been extremely enlightening to see both the consumer set as well as the regulatory set, FDA and FTC and all of the above here in the United States, trying to get their arms around what the science is saying, what the consumer demand is. And then also to really see retailers because retailers have a unique position to help decide and decipher, disseminate and, and really be choiceful in what they put on their store shelves. And what's sitting at store shelf, again, consumers walk into a said retail environment, specifically to major retailers, and believe they have a sense, they have an outsourced sense of trust. Oh, mm. it must have gone through some vetting, some standards, not typically. And so it's so great that the work I did on the nonprofit side around chemical policy has translated into a um, work over the last almost two decades to create mass retailers, mainstream retailers, grocery retailers to say, hey, consumer demand is there. We have to take a responsibility in our chemical policy. So what are the ingredients that are bad actors or should be seen as restricted? Petroleums, formaldehyde donors, endocrine disruptors, phthalates, these things that have known to cause or have seen to been linked to disease and illness. So that's clean and, and natural is a mandate now. Now, what are, the, what are the ingredients that we're infusing into these products to help get the body into a better state and, mm. and a thriving and a flourishing state? And that's really the wonderful bridge between healthcare and well-being and wellness, right? If we actually can um, be choiceful of what those ingredients are and consciously choose and, and, and use cutting-edge formulation and innovation to bring bring ingredients into these products and formats that we're putting on our skin and inside of our mouths and using for targeted applications that can get the body into a better state of balance. So either acute pain or more, um, or long, long-term wellness and, and, and well-being applications. Could you speak a little bit more about getting into that state of that state through these functional botanicals? What, what are some specific use cases for the, the different products that yeah. Prima is making right now. So if you look at our topical, so our skincare set specifically, we've actually run um, two third-party independent clinical res um, results on instrumentation as well as consumer perception, looking at if you take a high concentration of cannabinoids, full spectrum, excuse me, broad spectrum, full spectrum has THC, broad spectrum actually fractions out THC. And so it's uh, at a, at a non-detectable amount. Um, if you take those with other botanicals and oils and other herbals and plant-based ingredients, and if you infuse that in a skincare product, so we have two that we, we can talk about. We have a night magic and we have a uh, afterglow that's just launching. Mm -hmm. And Looking at some of the results and looking at some of the targeted areas for just, we'll just talk about this face and neck. You look at it, tone, elasticity, redness, fine line reduction, um, overall skin integrity and skin balance, moisture retention. And you're seeing how these botanicals and these, and what these do is, is once you bring those cannabinoids into the, um, the dermis, a couple layers down, you've got this um, receptor net network, what that does to calm the skin's sympathetic response to any stressors. Mm. And that's really what the endocannabinoid system does. It actually brings the body into a better state of balance so that the body can actually do its own healing. And, and then you infuse 
for instance, our night magic, our night magic has 13 cold pressed organic oils, as well as the um, 300 milligrams of hemp um, cannabinoids. And what that does, we have a hyaluronic, uh, a hyaluronic plant version, hyaluronic acid, which is a, a wonderful moisture retention. But instead of using hyaluronic acid, we've used prickly pear, which is nature's hyaluronic acid. So it's ability to hold moisture inside the skin and then distribute it broadly. So we have prickly pear, marula, um, neem, tamanu, some beautiful um, oils that are all specific to calming the skin's stress response. Mm. And then what that does to the a body's ability to bring the body into a better state of balance. And so humectants, as well as these other, um, these very, very important, important omega threes and fatty acids and what that does to the body. It's a really, really fascinating time. So skin applications, we also have targeted body care applications. So mm-hmm. we have, um, two in particular, one is called R and R and one is called bath gem, which are there to bring, um, and really to help the body manage its own recovery and relief pathways. Mm. Um, and so R&R, 750 milligrams of um, hemp cannabinoids, as well as um, uh, uh, calendula, uh, camphor, um, metal foam, and to really bring the body again back into a better state of mm. balance. Really, really a lovely, um, very, very nice, ex- extremely luxurious experience. Instead of being oily and slick, it's it's a water-based product or a really, really lovely experience. Um, and then we have ingestibles. And so we have th- three formats in the ingestible category. We have soft gels as well as the other um, ingestibles on the these botanical elixirs. And our soft gel is a vegan soft gel. So a, a dose of 15 milligrams of hemp cannabinoids and then these other terpenes. Terpenes act as solvents inside the body. So terpenes are those things if you smell lavender or any type of herbal, you're smelling terpenes and, and um, terpene compounds. So those act as solvents when they're inside the body. And so what we do is we micro encapsulate the cannabinoids. And so it bypasses the gut as well as the liver. And so you're actually getting a, a larger concentration of the hemp cannabinoids. And the theory of, of that is okay. If you're bypassing the gut and liver and not requiring the oral mucil so you're seeing a lot of the tincture format mm. um and the uptake on the tincture format or specific to the oral mucosal inside the body is that you have to have the right consumer experience you have to have the right consumer um expression of how you, how you take those mm. and so we we know that people understand how to take a vitamin or a supplement mm. by swallowing it it doesn't it doesn't depend on them to do an action to ensure uptake or bioavailability. And so we've optimized this um, vegan soft gel to really ensure a higher concentration of those molecules getting inside the body. And so that design to um, bring those molecules in is really, really specifically important. And so again, really being on the forefront of the innovation side on the on the science of, of bioavailability side, it's, it, and also to bring pure, safe, product to market because what you're seeing is and what we know that hemp in particular as well as cannabis but hemp is a bioaccumulator so in that bioaccumulation it pulls up constituents from the soil that could be heavy metals it could be mm. bacterial contamination that's part of the supply chain and so we want to make sure that we have clean safe soils we want to make sure that uh, the, we're using non-gmo seed as well as organic farming practices and so we're doing all those little things that ensures a really um, a heightened sense around an uncompromising sense around standards of quality and purity, because that's number one, that's a responsibility and duty as, as a, as a, as a brand, but it's also to ensure that the consumer experience as well as the consumer application is a, as safe and um, best experience as possible. The safe and having a safe experience and keeping it clean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, and one imagines and, and seasoned brand would do that, mm. but sometimes that, that's not always the case. You're operating like that from the very beginning, which I think is very commendable. I mean, look, I think it's like, again, I don't know other, any way to act. Um, I believe that any brand as part as part of your purpose, as part of your mission, as part of your core intent, what are your values? What are your principles? 
The first thing that I do when I go to a brand, I click on the about us, right? Who are they? What experience do they have? Why are they doing it? The, the values when I looked at on Prima's site, I mean, it's, it's poetry. It, you're starting out with some very beautiful values here. I appreciate that. Like, yeah, I think we, yeah, look, we, we believe that if you take care of the small little details, which people sense, um, again, down to the smallest, um, finest sourcing decision to how you're formulating your products to your quality SOPs and your protocols to um, doing all those multiple iterations of tests. We test five times throughout the supply chain to ensure potency and all the, the work we do on third party validations, working with like made safe and detox project around glyphosate and filling and, and continue to build that out. We're also, we're B Corp pending right now and we're soon to get our B Corp status, which is around social and environmental mm. accountability and transparency and, and doing it right from the beginning. So building that into your DNA, um, all those things matter. And I, I, I hope that we both excite and partner and collaborate with other brand leaders in the space because that's what it's gonna take. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity in, in the sense that um, in building a brand and building a brand of, of um, consciousness and mm -hmm. considered um, action that it, it takes, it takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of intent and it takes time and doing all those little things right from the beginning makes all those things down the road, just easier mm -hmm. um, having um, been there and done that. And um, it's really, really exciting just to, to, in, in a world of eureka moments, it's exciting to acknowledge the period of time that we're in. I think you're seeing a, a seismic shift and a paradigm shift within the consumer set to understand that self-care mm -hmm. is healthcare. Mm -hmm. That if you can be take preventative action, if you can understand that 75 to 95 percent of all doctors visits have a orientation or connection back to the body in a state of stress mm. or a state of alarm or a state of exhaustion and fatigue. That if you can take preventative action against that and take the time that it, 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 it is required in our, in our number one, our mindset, how we speak to ourselves and how we approach life, um, which I think is so critical, the poetry of, of life and the poetry of values and the poetry of how you speak to yourself and how you- How, how have you done that? I, look, I am- Your energy is very, very grounded and, and so. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do the work um, and the work, it's a practice. Um, it's, it's a practice in radical acceptance and self-acceptance. And understanding that we 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 all have, we all live a very abundant and, and blessed life, and how do you how are you going to optimize for those small small things every single day? I've got four children. Um, I want to be my best possible self for them. I've got innate, amazing humans in this building. I want to be my best self for them. Um, and it's it's doing those little things that um, you know it, it's. You know, you don't find your passion, your passion finds you. Mm. Um, and I believe that uh, I, I need to do the work, um, all those little things every single day to ignite my internal passion, but ignite the passion for other people, whatever their passion may be. Mm. And um, and look, I, 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 in my habits world, I try to live, I'm, I, people <laughs> will tell you I'm extremely particular i'm very i'm very i'm a control enthusiast as some say i've branded myself that and then people are like yes that is you um but that in control enthusiast nature helps me put me on a path of of and a point of view and a and a decide like what are you going to do in the world that is so uniquely you that you can really cause a a, a wave and a, a ripple effect of goodness and I think for me, that ripple effect of, of, of goodness is, is, is doing those small things really well and, and, and trying to, ignite, wherever I touch, you try and ignite and shift the world for the better, um, which is exciting. It keeps me incredibly, incredibly focused. And I try to live it every single day. I'm, I've been plant-based for almost, it'll be 26 years in April. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, I try to live as healthful and clean and as conscious as possible. Um, I, I, I am known to eat the, the great cheese pizza. I love pizza. Um, but I haven't eaten, um, any, any animal products for well over two and a half decades. And so it's, it's doing those little things that I feel like you have to live it and know it to really preach it and talk about it. Um, and so I think I want to be, especially for my children, the four most important people and, and my wife to really demonstrate. And I think you've got outside of talking about things, you have to demonstrate it through your actions. Wow. Demonstrating through the actions. Um, we've, t we've covered a lot of ground here. <laughs> I've taken you through a, a, a lot. This has been a journey yeah. um, about, about awareness and discovery and health and well-being mm -hmm. and taking it to a new standard of excellence from the very beginning. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people that are now just getting started that are seeking that same kind of standard of excellence and are resonating with what you're saying right now? What, what actions can they take to, to, to build something in the world? I, I think you've got to do the work to, um, again, to accept yourself and know yourself and to love yourself. Mm. And, um, and that knowing yourself and loving yourself and, and realizing who you are. Um, I think that's, it sounds easy and it sounds flippant and it sounds, uh, it, it sounds, um, like a throwaway. I do a lot of discovery and in, uh, into the stoic philosophy and, and, and listening and, and reading Ryan holiday and his work and understanding that type of philosophical approach to life. And, um, and that, that sense of, are you, are you doing it because you want to optimize and get better, which I find innately exciting. I, that a sense that you can always improve and co that continuous stage of improvement and mm -hmm. continuous improvement is, is seductive and really exciting for me. And then the other side of the coin is when is enough enough? Like, when are you okay? What, like, well, you're not only optimizing that you could step back and say, guys, this is it. We've done something or I've done something. And that's, that should fill you up with a sense of worthiness and, and self-satisfaction. And I, I have to say that's probably going to be that's going to be more and more work that I do. Um, and when is enough enough? And when is when are you trying to optimize for the more and the better and impact? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I I think there is there is something. There's a beautiful in a non-binary world we live in the gray. I think it's if you can understand that toggle and understand the nuance. I think there is opportunity for a bit of both. Well, you heard it um, from Christopher himself. Very grateful to have uh, for sharing your passion with us today. I appreciate the time, Christopher. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>